As you can see, I'm at the Rwanda Kwambuka 28th to remember, to unite and to renew for the remembrance of the genocide of 1994 that took place between April and July. During this time, about one million Rwandis, Tutsis, most, mostly, yes, a few, Twa and a few Hutus, but mostly Tutsis were killed. And I'll share with you, I'll show you, my friend, a bit of what happened today, but mostly the story of a survivor. There's nothing like hearing her story and how what she went through. It's not like nothing. It's not the media. It's not hearsay. It is someone telling you from her mouth. So please watch till the end. Tell me so that we remember that this should not happen again for the survivors that they thrive and for those who die that they are not forgotten. You can see my eyes are red. That's me having cried part of it. And so don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell as you watch this till the end. Can you see this guy? You see him in the circle and he's doing his thing. Yeah. Destination is on the right. Thank you. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's very beautiful. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Hello. Yes, uh, are you for, uh, for the event? Man? Yes, the yes, event. Rwanda, Rwanda yes. yes. Excellency Ambassador of the Republic of Rwanda, Honorable guests, dearest friends of Rwanda, compatriots who are here today, 
changed in 30 minutes as in they called us to sleep all together. We don't, we were not used to sleep with our parents. They called us to sleep all together. And in the night, I remember people were screaming outside. Chinani Chinani. Chinani, which was a nickname of the president of the Alman Ashpenal, who was killed in the airplane. My house was in the corner of four streets. There was a coffee bistro, a market. People used to sing when they were happy, of course, or shout, we could hear them perfectly. That evening, that night, we didn't sleep. When we woke up in the morning, we saw the Tutsi of uh, Iseni, our uh, neighbor district, marching in our village. One of the Tutsi, John, came into my house and uh, he told us uh, that uh, the Tutsi of Iseni and the Rungeri district were killed in the same night of 6 April 1994. We didn't know what to do. We stayed at home. During the day, we would see the smoke all over the mountains. We would learn on the radio of Milikorin again that the Inerahama, the youth groups, uh, the young generation who were trained by the government in the previous years were burning all the Tutsi's house in the entire country. My mom would take a decision that we should hide all of our belongings to the Hutu neighbors. Later in the evening, my grandma, Kuruskira Mukandanga, she was living uh, two miles away uh, than my house. She came to check on us. I would see my grandma entering in one of the rooms with my mom. They would talk for long. After that meeting, I was called in the same room and my mom, who was a sweet, who never talked about the politics, should explain to me, to me what is going in the country. She would talk with purpose and tell me, Polly, it's not the first time that the Tutsi are killed in the country. They were killed in 59. They were killed in 73. They were killed every year from 90s. So, remember something. You don't have the idea which is mentioning that uh, you are Tutsi. So it depends on how you will convince those killers. You go far away from house and you tell them you are like them. She ended and saying that they don't have the right to kill me. It was complicated. A situation. I am mom now. I don't know if I can tell it to my children. I can feel what she felt now. So she said I should also go with my grandma, Rusikira Mkandanga, and help her in the case things get worse. My grandma had only two children, my mom and the my uncle after me, and 
morning, uh, me, Tejeka didn't have yet the children, and it was only me and my brothers and sisters. I was the eldest daughter in the family. So my grandma would grab my hand. We both turned our eyes to the family. We waved the goodbye. I went with my grandma. On my way, I was remembering, I have a vivid picture of my brothers and sisters. I remember every single of their dreams. Like you here, your brothers, sisters, daughters, siblings, they all have their own dream too. For example, my eldest brother, Inosan Kairanga, he was 15 years, he dreamed to be a mathematician, but he was not a dream. He had the ability. He was also taken in the school of Art and Design, which he refused. He knows what he wanted to do in his life. And then he was uh, taken in the school of Chumbi, of maths and the physics. I will come back later on all my uh, siblings, what happened to them, because that time, we were separated. My family stayed in my home uh, in Gatunda. I just went with my grandma. My grandma and I reached her home, a sweet home, which never missed a food for its guests. And um, one of our neighbor, Karimera, will come to visit. And um, Karimera will start to talk about the situation in the country. I will see my grandma stopping, going in the kitchen, making food for us. My family never talked about politics in front of me. After the dinner, Karimera will go in, at home with his family. My grandma will hit the water and um, she asked me to be washed as she used to do when I was too little. That time I was 13 years, he was not washing me again. But this, that evening, she wanted to give me a bath. She washed me. She unwrapped me in her own cream for one of these people, you know it, Ikimori. And then she handed me a kinje. We went to sleep in her soft bed. I slept like a baby in her arms, no dream. In the morning when I wake up, she was sitting in front of uh, our bed, holding a bag, which she handed me and he told me that I should go and hide in the bushes. I didn't know how to hide in the bushes. She said, your cousins are waiting living room. <coughs> Savera was only 15, uh, 17 years. Elena was only 15 years. Maria was only 11 years. And Dan, the little boy, was only 2 years. We went in Kinyonza Valley. We, find, we found a covered area and we sit there. Kinyonza Valley was linked to the Lake Chibu. I brought this uh, 
uh, big picture, later you can have a look. Those are the mountains where we were hiding. There is no road. <coughs> we need to just walk in the high mountains. So we found uh, the place in Kinyonza Valley, which was linked to the Lake Chibu. And in the top of the mountain was uh, my uh, grandmother little house together with the big house of my uncle. Nitege Kanafta was a doctor. Between my mom and my uncle, there was 10 years difference. When my mom became a teacher in Mugonero, their dad passed away, and my mom took the decision to marry someone after she finished to educate his little brother who became a doctor. She was really proud of uh, his uh, little brother. So that huge house was there for us to use. My uncle, me, Tejekan Aftar, was not married yet. My brother and the sisters, we will go to the Lake Chibu, play, swim, be play. With imagination that the little kids can just only have. My uncle was the best uncle ever. He will take us every time in the hospital where he was working. He was so proud of my mom. Hospital Omonini, Morunda, everywhere. Around 10 o'clock, sitting in that valley, we will see the Inneraham, the youth groups trained by the government, reaching my uncle's house. They will take the roof tiles, they will take the doors, they will take the window, they will fight among us today for the furniture in my uncle's house. The rest they will destroy. They will try to knock the walls, but it was concrete, it was impossible. But take time, try to visualize. Seven years ago, 15 years ago, 11 years ago, 13 years ago, me, two years ago, sitting in the covered area of the valley, watching, waiting, without knowing what will be our faith, how bad it will be. I'm pretty sure now with the history, you know how bad it would have been if we were found that day. But watching, fighting for the furniture, hmm? can you imagine? Started to beat her with their sticks. 
like baseball sticks. Where we were sitting, it was not far. My grandma were beaten by them, but no sound, just silence. No fear, just resistance. I don't know where that bravery came from, but for me, it was my grandma who just fed me and washed me not more than eight hours before. What to say here? without knowing why. How they achieved that? It was done through 10 years of propaganda. Imagine the teacher who are supposed to teach our children. You have children. They were making role calls making stand all of the children, making lists. Those lists were read out on the radio of medically naming all of the Tutsi's families. The call was for all of the Hutu to go to war. Work means to keep them all from all the people 
to the new baby born. They were calling us our full names, like vermin. Imagine you here being called somewhere on the radio. Like they were calling us cockroach, snakes. Powerful names. Everywhere. The people who shared everything with us were listening to the government and finding us everywhere on the mountain, killing us. In the churches, Tutsi uh, thought they would maybe uh, have a fear of God, but not. It didn't work. They killed also in the churches. In the stadium, it was a complicated situation. My cousin and I, we stick all together. We were always hiding together. But uh, I can imagine people who have children. Huh? Two years old baby boy was hiding with us. He was tired, hungry, he, he was crying. He wanted to go back home. He was asking for food. It comes out the big sister because they were in one family, they asked if we can even hide the little baby boy alone. I said, no, he will be found, or he will walk into the killers and be killed. The only thing I have for Dan was my grandpa's stories. I will tell those stories of my grandpa, nearly like a little bird to him, and he, he will come down. And uh, for the food, I will observe those kira, how they were looking. They had a, a kind of a, a banana leaves around them. And uh, I will put the same and go and find the raw sweet potatoes. We children of Rwanda, we didn't have food in the home. We need to survive with that. And then we will have that and uh, she will come down. I will tell him the story of my family, and he will come down. It was raining a lot in April. It's raining all the time. That rain was a benediction if it was the day, during the day. But in the night, it was slippery. It was very difficult. That rain will be also the life source for us. We didn't have water to drink. The Kira, during the day it was raining, they would go back home and they retreat to kill us. We will find the banana leaves to collect water and a drink. Later, one of the neighborhood two will tell us that it is impossible to hide in our place because they were coming to kill everyone on those small mountains. So he said they, there was two places. Either we needed to go to Bicicero 
or to go to Nyamanini, the island. You could see the picture there later. So um, every evening uh, we were in the small groups. We were meeting in my uncle's house, the ruined house, to be to get the news. We were in small groups. So the group split in two. The people who know to swim will go to Nyamanini and the others will go to Bisesel. My cousin Dani didn't know how to swim, so we chose to go to Bisesero. Bisesero, it was the only place where Tutsi were standing still, still standing, and not accepting the government to kill them by laying down. They were fighting as they can to uh, just how I can explain that? I'm proud of them. They were fighting with nothing. A government who has military police, forces, the Indera Hamwe, the youth group, they were fighting with nothing. So, it was like 35 miles to get there. We sat in the night. We walked like 20 miles. We didn't reach. We arrived on uh, the one of the um, mountain called Venera. Um, uh, I wrote it up. And the one of the lady. The lady in Rwanda during the genocide were denouncing Tutsi. She screamed. All of the Inera Hamwe started running behind us. I was taken first. They were beating me. Others were running everywhere. Or the Tutsi who were with me. I don't know where that energy came from. I remember the, the word of my mom. I started screaming at them, those killers. No, don't touch me. I'm good to like you. It worked. They said, go on the side. We will talk with you after. So they were running behind my cousins. Ereda, Sabe, Dan, Maria, who hided more than two weeks with me. They will die on that mountain of Sakinyak up near Benjera. And the others who were with us. After they come to me, they came to me and they asked me, where were you going? Why were you, were you with those Tutsi? I tried to respond to them as I can. I was saved. Saved by the last device of my mom or saved by God. <laughs> or oh, is it the faith? They said, I can't continue uh, where I was going. They said, go back to your, where you come from, and if you are Tutsi, you will be killed there. I was tired. I didn't want to hide anymore. Uh, desolation, maybe. Isolation. Alone. No parents, no friends who were hiding with me. I was done with hiding. I started walking among those killers. No fear. I was done. I didn't care if they can kill me. Enough is enough. I decided to go back where I felt loved. I went in Mataba, the center of gravity of my family. 
60. Where are they with all of my uncles? I reached there. All of my uncles, they were two men. With all the kids in the stadium of the tour, their houses were destroyed. No one on the road back because I had to walk 20 miles. They were body and bodies, people who were killed. They had the lake chief everywhere. After Madaba, I decided to go to my house to see if my mom was there. I arrived in Igatunda where I was born. There was no one. No my mom, no my brother and sisters. Everything destroyed. I couldn't recognize my house. And the Gatunda market, there were more than 5,000 Tutsi who were killed on that market. In the front of my house, they couldn't deny that I'm Tutsi, but I didn't care if they were going to kill me. I was Already. but physically standing there. I decided to go in the, my grandma's house. Purusi Chiramuka and Danga who lived in Rohingo and to say goodbye to her before maybe I would be killed. I went there where they killed her. I said a proper goodbye. For me, for me it was important. It was important to tell her goodbye. I decided to go in the lake chief and they maybe try to reach Nyamunini. Nyamunini was far. It was like swimming more than 20 miles. It was impossible to, to swim today. But I will try the first little island. You will see them on that picture. I will see the two islands. Thank you to my father who teaches me to swim. But what I didn't know, they were in a railway patrolling the, the water. I would see them coming to me in their boat. They were behind the other island. They were rich. Uh, I wish no one to see their great eyes and their hatred in their hearts. It was something I never saw in my country. They had uh, those amahili. It's a kind of uh, baseball stick. They were putting the, the screws in the sides. When they smash our head, it was completely finished. I will see them. From far, I will scream at them with all of the energy I have. Don't touch me. I'm like you. Otherwise, you will be in trouble. Which trouble? I don't know where the energy comes from. Those killers will pick me up in their boat where they were killing my people and bring me to one of the other island, the third one. They will say, okay, stay there, I just like, I was going to find the food and, yeah, make me story. They went uh, in Kayobe, 
He go near to my grandma's place and it's just because they didn't know me if they went the kira from my grandma's house, uh, from grandma's place, they will know that I'm Tutsi. But they were coming somewhere, they didn't know me. So they will let me on that island. But when you think everything is finished, it's not finished. They were a man who knows my grandma. He called me, Pin, is that you? And that man was a Tutsi. He said, wait until the, those killer are gone. We're going to go together to uh, Nyamunini Island. He had a, a, a little boat he was hiding. And uh, we waited until 10. He came and said, now it's clear, let's go. On the uh, in the water going to Yamanini Island, he told me, you know what? Your father is on that island. My father, I thought he was killed in the beginning. He was there, the whole. I found my father, his name is Paul Kaitai, he is still living. I hunt talk about him now, otherwise it's too long. But he had his own journey and it was not very easy. But we have each other. He have me. He always come and see the little children here in the back. We can go in the mall of Emirates and grab an ice cream. Life is going on. So, on that island of Nyamunini, it was not possible to stay because uh, the Kira were coming to kill everyone. So, we had to move. One of the wealthy man was a group. He had uh, the cows on that island of his parents. He paid uh, Abashi in the Congo part. Abashi came, took the cows, and uh, we all went together with those cows. We were saved in the Congo. The other side, on the picture you can see yeah, uh, the phone way away. Later, like one month and, uh, and a half, her appeared. Together with his excellence, Paul Kagame, covering the whole country, they stopped the genocide. We were able to come back in our country. The one thing we had in our mind was to go to my village and see if my mom survived or my brother and sisters. So we are talking around Fort July. 1994, we went into our village and we found out that like a million Tutsi who were kids. My mom, Felista Mukabajina, was killed at the age of 40. She was killed by a morning, a guy who was praying with her. We found out that my 
my brother in a song Kairanga was killed uh, in, near the same place as my mom. And those young generation, youth groups, they didn't kill him properly. They thought they, they will torture him, asking how a brain of mathematician is look like. All of those details were given to us. We found out that uh, my brother, my second little brother, Karangwa Joseph, 11 years, was captured by the machetes and thrown in the lake chief. We found out that my first little sister, Josephine Wamahoro, was not killed properly. They cut her, they let her bleeding for more than two weeks working in the village. We found out that my second little sister, Uishimne Serafin, seven years together with my little brother, the last one, Chamatare Patrick, three years old, were killed together at our primary school of Rusoro. <coughs> we found out that my uncle, the funniest one, the doctor, Niite Yeka Naftar, was killed near the capital city of Chigali, he was there to buy the medicine for the hospital. That time he was working in Nyanza, and he thrown in the Nyabarongo River, telling him that he needs to go back where he came from. But he was in one piece like others. I'm sorry to give all of those details. And I am not here to make you sad. I want you not to feel sorry for me. I want you to help where you can, if it's possible to the other people who can be in a need. And in 2009, my father and I we were able to bury all of my family in a matava. They may rest in peace. Um, I wrote a few things. many times, but it is not important. What is important is that I survived. I could not stand here before you 
and be the person who has the strength to not just survive but to live with love and hope without my family. I source all of my strength from my grandfather, Luhago, my mom, my family. The love they gave me was enough, even if it was at ended at 13 years. That love brought me everywhere in the world. I spent 10 years in Paris by myself in that nice country. I got French nationalities on my own. That passport who can help me to travel the world. I spent 10 years in Brussels. And now, six years in the bad. I never forget how important our family are. They are part of us. All the Tutsi of Nyamunini and I, we were all passengers together on those boat with cows and fishes. These days, no matter who I sit near in the economy or Emirates business class, because I do, I guarantee you the smell is better than the fish ones. However, those cows saved our time. My last mom advice, this advice is a part of the reason I can tell you the Tutsi history today. Tell them you are good. It's the title of the book I wrote in Europe in 2011. Many schools, university, associations, invited me to deliver my testimony. Many television invited me to talk in the, their place. I recall Laura Fair, a journalist of France, an amazing lady. As she held my hand tightly, and telling me those words I want to share with you. I got you, Pauline Kaitam. I read you in one night, as I couldn't sleep without knowing what happened next. Today, I invited you, so the million of French citizens can read and you know about your story and the rest of the world. I cannot explain to you in words how much that lady supporting me, encouraging me, gave me also too much hope and the strength to continue my day on this path. Today I'm standing here in the hope that I can encourage or inspire even one of the person here in this room to reach out, to touch someone else's life. Be the hope, help where you can. We can all make difference. Thank you for listening and thank you for coming to be with us.